Now, as many as three quarters of all new coronavirus infections across the UK involve the so-called Indian variant. And the health secretary, Matt Hancock, says that the number of new cases is rising again throughout the country. That rising rate of infection is casting doubt on whether the government really can lift remaining restrictions on June the 21st. Public health expert Professor Linda Bold joins us from Edinburgh. Um, Professor Bold, you heard what the minister has to say. Um, does that sound like we are heading to end of lockdown on June 21st to you? I think it's very ambitious, Trevor, looking at the national picture. The average seven-day average for cases at the moment is well over 3,000. If you look back just to the first week of May, we were around 2,000. And in some parts of the country, including parts here in Scotland, we've seen a big increase. And I know that's not translating yet to large numbers of people in hospital, but there are more people in hospital, particularly those in midlife who may only have had one dose of the vaccine. So looking ahead, the 21st of June is very soon. Um, and I think to avoid more preventable deaths that you've just been discussing with the minister, we really need to be cautious at the current time. So you actually, if you, I know that you're not in the policy territory, but if you had your way, you would actually have to be positively uh, convinced that opening on June the 21st is safe before you uh, follow the roadmap as it currently is, which is to lift all restrictions after that date. That's correct. And I think even from policy colleagues, including in the devolved nations, we've been hearing very cautionary me uh, messages and that we can't commit to towards the end of June, the, the sort of summer solstice date. Uh, I really think that it's too early to be charging ahead. I would like to see several more weeks data and the kind of evidence I want to see and my, all my colleagues is that these uh, chains of transmission, these links between the fact that we always knew we'd have slightly more cases when we opened up, but it's moving through the system to then uh, people becoming unwell. We don't want anyone to become severely unwell with this virus and we've really got just over four in ten of the population who've got good protection from both doses. Other countries, final point on this, that have opened up fully, like Israel, have many more uh, in their population that have got full protection from the vaccines, and we're just not there yet. But, um, Professor Bold, you're, you're a distinguished expert in behavioural science, amongst other things. Um, changing the signals, which at the moment say we're heading towards opening, do you think, we're not Israel, do you think that Britain would respond well to that? Or are we now at risk of creating a, a situation where uh, a population has been relatively compliant, uh, seeing its summer holidays slipping away uh, underneath lockdown might start to revolt? Well, there's two points there. The first one is, yes, the, gov the, the public are totally fed up. Everybody uh, just wants things to go back to normal or most things to go back to normal. I think we recognise that and there is frustration. But the government said, particularly the UK government said, data not dates. And so I think they really do need to follow the data. And as I say, at the moment, the situation is, is not entirely moving in the right direction. On compliance, we heard from Dominic Cummings' uh, criticism of behavioural scientists, including on Spy B at the beginning of the pandemic, saying there would be behavioural fati fatigue. That didn't come from my colleagues on Spy B. And actually, the British public, the levels of adherence and compliance have been truly astonishing. And when you look at the latest data, some of the surveys that have been done, there's a significant portion of the population who are still very, very concerned, recognise that we shouldn't be rushing ahead. And so I don't think we're going to see rioting on the streets, despite the fact that we ha have had demonstrations around vaccines, etc. That's a small proportion. What most people in this country want is not, not more people to die, to be able to move ahead um, with more confidence and to know that we're not going to have to take backward steps and go back into local or national restrictions. Nobody wants that. So forgive me, I, I missed a, a, a second of what you were saying, but am I to understand that you actually think that what Mr Cummings now says, he said at the time, which was harder, faster, lockdown quicker, was correct? I think so. I mean, I do have sympathy for some of the decisions taken very early on in the pandemic when we didn't know about airborne transmission and we didn't know so much about asymptomatic transmission, etc. And a number of countries in Europe didn't act quickly enough. 
Um, I think, you know, Cummings evidence, I mean, it was really shocking listening to that and it will all be poured over. And I don't think we should, you know, be necessarily making judgments now about what he said that was correct and wasn't correct. But I think a lot of things he said about decisions that were taken that could have prevented such a big second wave, uh, things we should have learned around travel, around ventilation, around moving cautiously, protecting particular groups, you know, we're still not necessarily being that cautious and using that evidence. So I think some of what he said, we really do need to learn from, not in a future public inquiry next year, but learn from now. Well, of course, that's important now. The, the, at the heart of much of what we're doing now is the relationship between politics and science. And I just want to ask you, because I'm interested in this uh, as a scientist, the government's been saying from the start of this that it has been and will be guided by the science. Listening to Dominic Cummings and watching from your own experience and your own participation, uh, do you think that's actually what's happened? Not entirely, no. I mean, first of all, there's no single science. Scientists always disagree, and then the consensus needs to be reached. But it's very clear, you know, we were delayed in getting the SAGE papers, so we can now all pour over them. And it's clear at s several points in the pandemic, the government didn't follow the advice of SAGE, including the behavioral science advice, that's very clear. But in looking back to the autumn recommendations around taking early action in September, those were not taken. So I don't think the government has always followed the science. I think it's completely incorrect to say that's the case. In some aspects they have, in some aspects they haven't. And the final point I would make there is that one of the things, Trevor, to me that's most regrettable about the last 14 months is that governments have often blamed the public uh, for things that have gone wrong, the public's behaviour. And just going back to the data I was referring to, you know, the public have suffered, they've tried their absolute best, um, and I think, you know, government needs to take responsibility for, for what's occurred. Professor Ball, thank you so much. I know that we'll return to this many, many times.